The answer to this question lies in the nucleus of the first cell of a potential living being. Contained within this cell is all the information necessary to generate these abrupt and complex reorganizations. In the last 10 years, more than 350 sequences of a type of gene known as Hox have been discovered. Their function is to direct the architecture of each living being. They distribute and organize each one of the different organs and tissues along the central axis. You could say that they are responsible for making sure that all the parts of a body are in the right place. The Hox genes are arranged in the chromosome in an order which corresponds to the final position of the organs which will develop from them. For example, in a butterfly, we would first find those genes which will lead to the development of the head, then those which correspond to the trunk, and finally those of the abdomen. If the position of one of these gene sequences were altered, we would find the equivalent change in the anatomy of the adult butterfly. And it is precisely this correspondence between the arrangement of the genes and the position of the final organs that is common to all animals. This is the clue that points to the Urbilateria as the common ancestor which already possessed this sequence of genes that has been carrying out the same function since then and continues to do so in the fish, arthropods, birds, and mammals that are alive today. The family of Hox genes that controls the development of the eye is practically identical for the arthropods and for man, and yet the human eye is nothing like that of a fly. This is because what gives an organ its definitive shape is precisely the way in which each species interprets the information contained in the genes. If evolution occurred as a result of adaptation to the environment by means of gradual changes, we would have a reduced number of morphological designs and a large quantity of different adaptations. However, life as we know it shows the opposite picture to be true. Different groups appeared suddenly and throughout their presence on the Earth remained largely unchanged until their extinction or some new abrupt transformation. But this pattern in the evolutionary process met a turning point in the development of life. One of the youngest species on the planet began to develop the ability to redirect the path of evolution. The human brain is a mere 4% larger than a chimpanzee's. This tiny percentage tells us little about the difference between the two species. For a long time, it was thought that what differentiated humans from other animals was precisely the larger size of our brains. But in fact, it was another adaptation that laid the path for human evolution. The change from walking on all fours to walking on two feet brought the beginning of a new way of interacting with the environment. The upright position liberated the hands to make tools. From this moment on, the evolutionary feedback between the hand and the brain placed the hominids on the path towards the development of a more complex brain. By thinking simultaneously about hunting and the manufacture of tools, 
different modules of the brain intensified their connections. The factor that contributed most to this connection was a tool that was especially apt for transmitting information, language. I think the first thing one has to say about language is that it is the crucial difference between humans and other animals that makes us unique. Essentially because in animals, if animals are to change and acquire new habits, they really do have to change their genes. They have to evolve to be able to do new things because the amount that they can learn from their parents is very limited. We, on the other hand, I mean, the difference between the way we live and the way our hunter-gatherer ancestors lived is nothing to do with the difference in our genes. Our genes are much the same. They are to do with things that we have learnt and things we pass from generation to generation by language. Without language, history simply wouldn't happen. There would be no such thing as history. So I think language is quite crucial in distinguishing us from other organisms. A widely held view is that our brain possesses a special mechanism for the acquisition of language, something like a linguistic chip, which developed gradually as we evolved. It is the basis of a universal grammar which is common to all languages and which we do not need to study nor learn. What is clear is that whether language evolved genetically or not, the human species incorporated it into their development and made it what it is today. Language made humans more sociable, and the ability to formulate and transmit abstract concepts made foresight, imagination, and talent possible, and consequently made us capable of understanding and changing the world. In other words, language opened the way for science and technology. For the first time, through biotechnology, Evolution will be guided. It will have an objective. Natural selection will begin to be replaced by artificial selection. This artificial selection will considerably reduce variability because man will diminish the role of chance in the mechanisms which generate new forms of life. It is possible that at some time in the future, we will manage to create a descendant of our own species which is better adapted to the environment with the capacity of integrating technological elements into its organism. This species will displace man and will supplant him in the use of intelligence. But it is possible that this new species will not escape having to face a similar cataclysm to that which occurred with the contamination by oxygen, one which will redefine the conditions of the Earth's habitability. If this happened, the progressive decrease in the genetic variability which contributed to the appearance of the successor of the human species would seriously imperil the continuity of life on this planet. In a devastated setting where the last vestiges of former life forms have disappeared, chance would again take hold. And perhaps the surface of our planet would surprise us again with the appearance of new life. Would evolution follow the same path? Even supposing that the mechanism of selection were to come into force, what would the new inhabitants be like? Would another intelligent species appear? Since the appearance of Luca, the Earth has been inhabited at different times by millions of organisms living closely together, eating and drinking each other, some breathing the waste matter that others release into the atmosphere, a tight network of dependencies which has filled the Earth with life throughout the evolutionary process. Since the beginning of its existence, our planet has undergone great changes. 
Chance has been a ruling factor in the history of life and has determined the path that is followed up to the present day. Evolution produced us and allowed us to become the first species to study and control its mechanisms. In our hands lies a significant part of the future of a process which was conducted for billions of years without the aid of man. We will have the power to create new species and improve the environment, but also to destroy it. The Earth without life, or with a different kind of life, with or without us, will continue to exist. Thank <laughs> you.